Hello classmates, my name is Mara Jean Walden and this is my presentation on Anthony Giddens' Structuration Theory. Structuration Theory, as I said, was introduced by Anthony Giddens. His primary works were published in 1976 and 1984 called The New Rules of Sociological Method and the Constitution of Society. As a sociologist, he was looking at how people interact with each other and how those actions then create rules and structures by which people then gauge their behaviors. Because it's a sociological theory and not a communication theory, it obviously applies to a vast array of social situations. But before we get to that, I'd like to talk with you about the basics of his theory. First of all, it's a cybernetic theory. He's interested in the system and the structures that are created within any group of people, from a small group of three to a large organization, even to nations and countries and how they interact. One of the first things, one of the first terms rather, that is famous from his theory is called the duality of structure. Basically, his premise is that inside any group of people, Every person chooses to behave, has certain actions, and those actions create the structures of the group that they're in. However, the structures of the group that they're in also empower and limit the actions of the people in the group. When I first read this theory, I thought, well, no duh. Of course, any group that I am in, there are certain ways that I'm going to behave and I'll behave differently in different groups depending on the situation. But Giddens went deeper into his concept than that. First of all, he had two terms, rules and resources. And again, just like duality of structure, these two terms are foundational to his entire theory. Rules are each person's understanding of how things should work. Whereas resources are things that can help me get stuff done. These rules are learned throughout your life and the resources shift from time to time, depending on your placement inside of a social structure. As you can see from the slide, each one of those small stars can represent a person in a group. So in this case, a small group of five, but each one of those people, if they were to come together into a new group, each one of them understands different rules for how they should behave in this new group. And each of them also has different resources. A person's rules are created from three basic structures, the signification, legitimation, and domination. These terms were also explained in our textbook, but allow me to paraphrase. Signification is, how an event should be interpreted. Legitimation is what should happen in any given situation, i.e. what is legitimate, what should be there. And domination, finally, is what means should be used to accomplish those goals. And again, each person in any size group comes to that group with variations and shades of those three things and can have very different understandings of what an event means, why it's significant, of how an event should or, sorry, of what should be done in a certain situation or of how to accomplish their own goals. The context that's most interesting to me is that of the high school classroom. If you recall from my introductory post, I am a classroom teacher. And so I am interested in how my students come into my room. What do they interpret? How do they know how to get things done? what should happen from their point of view. According to Giddens' theory, each person also has capability and knowledgeability. Every person in a group has power to act on, ignore, or change what they do in that group. Even if the structures tend to limit their behavior, they still have the choice. They are capable of choosing something else. He calls them reflective agents. Each person has the ability to reflect not only on their own behavior, but on everyone else's behavior as well, and make choices based on what they perceive. 
Knowledgeability is one of Giddens most interesting terms in my opinion. Knowledgeability is basically a person's awareness of their own behavior and it can occur on three levels. First of all they can have discursive knowledgeability. That means that they are able to discuss why they do what they do. The second level is practical knowledgeability. They make choices but aren't necessarily able to articulate them until someone asks them about them. And finally, there's unconscious knowledgeability. This is basically they're responding to the environment, but if you ask them about them, why, why they're doing what they're doing, they can't really explain why. This is my day-to-day -day life as a high school teacher. According to Gittin, each person also has identities and routines. Identity is an ever-shifting way of how a person perceives themselves inside their social structures. Whereas routine are those taken, to grant, taken for granted patterns of behavior that recur over time. As people come together in a group, what, again, whether a small group, a classroom-sized group, as is in my experience, or a large organization, the way people behave is both influenced by the structures that are already in existence and those structures are also changed by people's behavior. Mediation and contradiction are two things that can happen inside any group. As people are choosing to behave, what is accepted and standardized inside that group could either support the structures that are already there or work against a structure that exists. A final key of Giddens theory is that all choices whether they're made from discursive knowledgeability, practical knowledgeability, or unconscious knowledgeability, have unintended consequences. Yes, people act according to what they desire. However, those actions have consequences that they cannot foresee. I see this all the time, almost every year, in my high school classroom. The one that immediately comes to mind is enforcing the tardy policy. Think back to when you were in high school. It might have been five years ago, it might have been 35 years ago, but being late to class is usually frowned upon. As a teacher, I have a choice as to how I, the structures that I utilize in my classroom for dealing with that specific behavior. However, if the structures are not enforced uh, consistently, or if students simply choose to ignore the structures that I am attempting to put in place, their actions affect my structure. This last year, I had a get your honey to class on time list. So if you walked in after the bell rang, you put your name on the list, and I put that tardy into the school's system. I noticed, however, that that wasn't changing people's behaviors. At the most part, especially first period, those kids would continue to come late. The structure that was in place was not affecting their behavior. Now, there are lots of other sociological theories and psychological theories as to why that happens, but Giddens theory would reinforce the idea that they have some preconceived rules and resources for whether or not they show up on time. For them, it's not how things are done. They don't need to show up on time. And for me, not having an actual repercussion for being late that meant anything to them meant that they continued to act in a way that I thought was inappropriate. No matter what organization you find yourself in, no matter what size of group, Giddens theory attempts to uh, explain that how people act both influences and is influenced by the behaviors and structures of the group. And that is the basics of Anthony Giddens' Structuration Theory.